wondering what it's all about. Yeah. Sometimes you're a bit noisy. And I've got three teams, yellow and red. And I've also got an assistant, Lizzie Lobster. She's really cute and she asks lots of questions. What I'd really like to know is why is he called Professor Lobster? But what's the show all about? Well, what it's about is about buildings and how they're built and what, what you know, what makes them stand up and so on. <laughs> well, that was pretty clumsy, but the Professor Lobster Show is about how buildings are built and sometimes how they fall down like that, and it's about materials. It's about stone and wood and glass and iron and steel and concrete and old buildings and new buildings, buildings from the Stone Age to the Space Age, and this first program's about stone. Not again. Now, in any good kitchen, you've got a menu. And this menu has got stone on it, in tension and compression. It's got arches and buttresses. Now, that sounds a bit boring. What we've really got is stone engine carrots, arches and bananas, and the flying buttresses. Professor? Yes? May I ask you a question? Why have you got an L plate on your back? Does it stand for lobster? Well, it could do, but it really stands for a learner. Learner? But you're a professor? You know everything, don't you? Do I, heck no. I learn new things every day, just like you do if you ask questions. Remember, if you don't know, ask. Now, that would be a really good motto for this show. If you don't know, ask. So remember, kids, if you don't know, ask. I've got another question for you, then. What's that? This stone you threw at me, it's not stone, it's polished iron. So when are we going to see some real stone? Ah, well, what we'll do is we'll go on a journey. And it'll be a little bit cold, a bit chilly. I'm getting worried about this professor. I don't think he knows what he's doing, or what time of year it is. Are you ready? Round we go. Where are we? Well, this is Stonehenge. It's just a load of dirty stones, though. Oh, it's more than that. This is a calendar. All right, then. If it's a calendar, tell me the time. Well, the time according to my lobster watch, is 10 to 2. But this calendar didn't tell the time of day. What it told was the time of year. This was to tell the, the seasons, and particularly to tell you when it was Midsummer's Day, because that was quite important. Let me show you why over here. See, come and look at this. That down there is called a heel stone. Heel? Oh, you mean heel? No, not that sort of heel. It was helos, that's a Greek word meaning sunstone. And on Midsummer's Day, the sun rises from behind that stone onto the top of it, shines through these columns, and shines right through at the altar, which is in the middle of Stonehenge. Oh. Now, that was very important, because what it meant was that the priests could predict when the sun was going to come up on top of that stone, and the people who came to worship here, because this was like a cathedral, watched the sun fall on the altar. It must have been very, very dramatic. Anyway, it was there in, in June, July, August, September, October, November, December, every month, it kept... What have you got there? Nothing. Oh, I see. Oh, how do they stay up? Well, they stay up because of the weight of the stone. That big tall one weighs 50 tons. 50 tons? Well, how come it doesn't fall over? Well, because it's dug down into the ground about two and a half metres. Quite a long way, really. It's about, oh, six metres high, and they're also connected together. Well, what's that? Well, th that See? there, and that little tooth up there on top of the column, is the thing that would go into the socket in the beam. This beam, this one here, 
sat on top of that once, and originally that one, you see, looked like this here. This is one of the earliest examples of post and beam construction, and modern buildings today are often built with the same principle. All right. Yes, even though this is 4,000 years old, you could say this is the start of British architecture. What was that terrible noise? Well, there are some modern buildings I'd like to see destroyed, but that's another story. What I want to do now is talk about the principles of building construction. And, come on, you lie down here and sit on top of him. And what we're going to talk about is compression. When you build, you build with things that weigh, stone weighs things, brick weighs things. And he's sitting on him, and what's happening is being pressed downward. Will you organise one of it? Load some up over there now, Liz. Now, what we've got is a compression structure. The weight from this lad on this... Who are you? Chris. Chris, actually, is a foundation. The weight is pressing down on him. How are they doing over there? Oh, no. So it's about pressure. Now, if buildings could talk, they'd complain about compression. Remember, pressing together. But the other stress that's even worse in building is tension. Tension, that's the one where materials are being pulled apart. Now, how can we best describe that, Liz? Where, where are you? Liz? Here I am. Ah. Leo, Chris Craig, come and help me. Oh, you're going to get your own back, are you? Now, that's what I mean. A lot of materials like stone are very good in compression, but they're very weak in tension. Now, tension means when they're being pulled apart, and there are stresses in buildings when they move and when they're pushed by the wind, or with the way the structure moves, which stretch the material until finally it gets so far that it has to snap and the structure collapses. Here we've got a model of Stonehenge. Remember, it was about six metres high, and we've got some carrots that represent people. They could be American tourists or Manchester United supporters. But what this is, is a very good example of a structure in compression. We've got this big beam at the top, which is held up by massive columns, and it's only got a very short span there. Now, if the span was bigger, if these columns are a different shape, the stresses on the beam would be very different at the top with a load on here. Imagine this was part of a big wall. There would be compression at the top, it would be being pressed together, and there would be tension at the bottom, because as this beam bent, it would be opening the bottom of the beam, it would be stretching it. And if I put a big load on the top there, it would compress this, and it would break at the bottom because of the tensile forces. No, it wouldn't. Oh, yes, it would, wouldn't it? Oh, yes, it would! Oh, yes, it would, and I'm going to show you. Now, come on, Elizabeth. You bring me a stone, and we're going to give you our first kitchen demonstration. Now, this is a piece of real stone. Yeah, and it's heavy. And what we're going to do is put it in this device as a beam. There it is, sitting in. I think it'll break. Do you think it'll break? No! And we've got a point load in the middle, and there's one kilo on there. Pass them along. Thank you. This is five. That makes six. Eleven. Do you think it's going to break? No. I do. Are you sure it's not going to break? Twenty-four. To put these on very gently so we're doing it properly. Twenty-six. Oh, well, I think it's going to be breaking soon. I'm expecting this to break. When I did my calculations, it was going to break. Do you think it'll break or not? No. Well, give me that big one and we'll put it on Ooh. very gently. Now, this is very gently. Just watch now and it'll go at the bottom. Uh, this stone doesn't want to break yet. Let's put it on there. Wow. I thought it was going to break. You see, when stone breaks in tension, it breaks at the bottom of the beam. It did break and what it showed was that stone is weak in tension. So we couldn't build everything with stone beams. The best way to use stone is in arches. And the invention of the arch was as important as the invention of the wheel. I think we should go on another journey. How are we going to get there? Well, look up. At least that specimen being spun. <laughs> this professor. I don't think he knows what he's doing. He's always bringing me to places with no roofs on. First of all, Stonehenge, and now this. Hey, Prof, what time is it? It's ten to two. Ten to two? Yes. It was ten to two at Stonehenge. Yes. Well, what time would you like it to be? Where are your gloves? Oh, I've forgotten them this morning. A bit cold. I've got a surprise for you. Well, what's the surprise? Oh, <laughs> life's full of little surprises, isn't it? 
They're far too small, though. They're not going to fit on. They will? I don't think so. Then we'll just try them on. Go on, then I will do. You're absolutely right. You should never judge a toffee by its wrapper, should you? No. Why are we here? Well, we're here for some chalk and talk. Chalk Here's and the talk. chalk. I'm going to do some talking. There. Come on, Liz. Now, this arch is made out of small stones called voussoirs. Voussoirs? That doesn't sound English. It's a French word. They had French masons build buildings like this a long time ago. Why were the French over here, then? Well, they came over with William the Conqueror, 1066 and all that. But anyway, we're talking about this arch. So these voussoirs are small stones, and they're placed one on top of another until they meet in the middle with a keystone. Well, how come they don't all just fall down? Well, they put timber centering round inside. You mean a, a timber frame? Yes, that's right, and then they take it away. Well, then when they take it away, surely all this is just going to collapse? No, because the weight of each of these members presses down one on the other, like this, and it becomes a compression structure. Can you feel me? Yeah. Compression. I'm pressing down. Yeah. Well, this is pressing down, and the load that's coming down there, and then it's transmitted sideways down through the arch in compression forces, that way, and also across to the other side, down here. And it makes a really strong structure, an opening that you can walk through. Remember, the wedge-shaped stones that make an arch are called voussoirs, and the one at the top that holds it all in place is the keystone. What's this, Liz? It's a keystone. That's right. What's this, Professor? That's a voussoir. No, none of those fancy foreign words. In plain English, it's a wedge-shaped stone. Well, you're right, and all you do is you make arches with them. Keystones and voussoirs, and we're going to have a competition. Oh, now, it's right. time we got these, these helpers going. Three teams, three arches, one yellow, red and black. Fantastic prizes! No expense has been spared to bring you bananas for the winners. Carrots for the runners-up. There's no losers in this show. Now, we're going to watch you, and Liz and I are going to judge, and we're going to see you from here. Are you ready? Wait for it. Go! Go! Just got it there ahead. Here are your prizes. Now, I'll give you some more later. Now, this is a really good, this is a really good arch. I'm very, very pleased with this. What do you think of it? It's good, but it's a bit simple, isn't it? Well, yes, but that, the simple ones can be made more complex. And what we could do is go to a building where there's a lovely arch that stopped the roof falling in. So we'll go on another journey. And what we need is the map. And what we need to do is go west. And that's in that direction. Come on. Right, we'll see you later, kids. Bye. Why do we have to walk everywhere? Mm. Why can't we have a car like everyone else? Oh, well, we'll get one later, Liz. What are you looking for? I'm looking for Wells Cathedral. Well, why don't you look her? <laughs> Good grief. Can't you see? I can, but can you? Yes, I can. These are Wells Cathedral specs. I'm very pleased with them. I'm wearing them to celebrate a famous building failure hundreds of years ago, when the weight of the tower, which weighs hundreds of tons above here, was pressing down on the columns. And the columns began to bend outwards until the building began to fall over. I'm a prof, prof. Yes, you are. But what the medieval builders needed was a scissor arch to stiffen the columns. That looks a bit like that up there. Yes, it does. The specs show it very well. The weight of the tower on top here was pressing down and is relieved by the scissor arches that they built down to the foundations at the bottom here. And the curve pieces at the side restrain the columns which were bending here. What are those holes for? Oh, well, they were to lighten the structure and also so that you could see through it because they wanted the building to be elegant and light. In fact, the whole building is absolute magic. Hundreds of arches, all pressing down on one another, all balanced and transmitting the load down to the ground. It really is medieval engineering. It's the equivalent of going to the moon now. Prof, where are you taking 
Tina. Open up. Somewhere really interesting. Come on. Open up. Down, 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 down. And down, 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 down. And what do you think of this? Wow. Yeah, I think wow's a pretty good word. It's made of stone. Stone's not just for cathedrals and uh, monumental buildings. It's for housing like this. How old are they? They're over 600 years old. It's one of the oldest inhabited streets in Britain. Oh, well. This is better than some of the places you've been taking, though. They've got roofs. <laughs> well, that's because they've been maintained. You mean looked after? Yes. This, this building will have had several roofs in its lifetime and the windows and doors will have been replaced and some of the stonework's been replaced as well. You can see the chimneys there have been replaced because the stone's new. Older stone begins to decay and weathers. What's mean by weather? Well, the weather gets into it. The rain with sulfuric acid gets in there and it needs continuing maintenance. Hey, what's over here? Well, just a minute. Take, oh, well, I was going to show you a bit more about it. Hey, remember, it's about them decaying. It's like your teeth. Got to be looked after. Got to be cleaned. Right, let's test these arches. What happens if I take the keystone out? Well, try it and see. Oh. Well, let's go to the next one. Now, arches aren't very strong if they're not loaded. So if you put pressure on it from inside, let's see what happens. See, that wasn't very strong either. But this black arch, what we're going to do is restrain it properly. And what we've done here is we've got a pressure at the side where the thrust is going outwards. And we've also got pressure at the bottom. Now, let's see. Here we are. We've got Angela Keystone here. We'll see whether it holds up. Do you think it will? Are you not sure? Mm. Oh, well, let's see. Come on, Angela. There you go. Now, you see, strong because it's restrained. Wanting to build higher and higher, designers of Gothic cathedrals use flying buttresses to support the structure. Here they are propping up the side of the building with weights on top to keep them in place. The flying buttresses here are going to build me a Gothic cathedral. Now remember in the Middle Ages they always wanted to build higher and higher. So let's have a column. Now this is really a bit ordinary. Let's have a higher column than this. Come on, higher. And together, that's more impressive. Now the big problem with this is stability. This isn't really going to stand up very well. See, I can push it over very, very easily. Right, so what they did was they buttressed it. Come on up again, high columns again. And can I have two side aisles, please? Now, this is getting better. These side aisles are stiffening the building. I'll just walk under the aisle here, see? That's the aisle, and this is the big nave of the cathedral. But this as well isn't entirely stable. I can still push this over if I really tried. So what they did was they invented the flying buttress. So let's have the two flying buttresses, please. Now this is getting more exciting structurally because what we've got now is we've got this Gothic cathedral. Put the aisles in here. These are the aisles, remember. This is the nave. It's very, very high. And it's the weight of these flying buttresses on the top of these buttresses that are keeping the whole structure stable. Really, the difference between an arch and a flying buttress is like the difference between an airship and an aeroplane. Now, in the Middle Ages, they were celebrating heaven. They also remembered to celebrate hell. And sometimes, the masons did little carvings of the builders. And if I'd have been in the Middle Ages, I think I might have been a gargoyle carved like this. Ah! got time for this week it's been about stone next week it's about timber another amazing competition it's the professor lobster king post trust building competition so what we've got is the professor lobster salute that's it with your hands like that and also you've got to remember the motto if you don't know ask so what's the motto professor lobster, lobster, lobster.